Language change is definitely inevitable. All parts of language are always changing, all the time. So why does language change? Why does this happen? For one, language is a bottom-up emergent system. Certain trends and changes sometimes just take hold and kind of gradually spread from there, and we can't always explain why. This is one of my favorite examples of this. This map shows the, how the pronunciation of the words caught, C-O-T, and caught, C-A-U-G-H-T, have changed over time. The red areas are where people pronounce those words differently, and the blue areas are where they pronounce them the same. Here's what that trend looks like numerically. So it's not like these changes happen all at once. They start in one area, and some changes get picked up and spread, and others don't. By the way, this is a really cool book, and if you're interested, you can buy it through the Linguistic Discovery website, and it helps support me as a creator. Reason number two, that languages are always changing. The world is always changing, too. We always need new words for new ideas and things. Reason number three, Words lose their communicative effect over time. As a word becomes more frequent, it becomes less novel, less interesting. People are more used to hearing that word, and it no longer catches people's attention in the same way. So we have to come up with new ways of kind of conveying the same message. To do this, we might use existing words in new ways, such as the word friend being used as a verb. 20 years ago, you couldn't use friend as a verb. You had to say be friend instead. But now, friend is a verb meaning to add someone as a contact on social media. Another way we solve this problem is by repeating things. So this is where double negatives come from. The first negative doesn't really insist on the negation enough, and so we have to repeat it, and we stick another negative in there. When a word loses its meaning like this, we call it semantic bleaching. Another really common process is when you use a word metaphorically or sarcastically so much that that sarcastic or metaphorical use starts to become associated with the word. This is what's happening with the word literally. Literally, of course, originally meant literally, but now, because it's been used sarcastically so much, literally is starting to come to mean figuratively. It's actually switched its meaning. Another way that language changes is politeness. Ever think about why the word master tends to have positive connotations, but the word mistress has negative connotations, like uh, someone's mistress on the side? That actually started because people were trying to address women more politely. People would address women of lower social status with kind of high class status words, such as mistress, even when maybe they didn't uh, technically merit that term. So you might very politely refer to a person's mistress as a mistress, and over time the term mistress kind of got watered down and lost the more high-class connotation it originally had. There's another reason languages are always changing is because the sounds of language tend to affect the sounds around them. For example, the word implant used to be implant. The N changed to an M to be more like the P sound that followed it. That same process is also happening with the word input. A lot of people pronounce this in fast speech as input with an M. You probably don't notice this, but you'll catch yourself or other people doing it if you pay attention. And one last simple reason that language is always changing is because of social prestige. Different words or different ways of talking are simply more fashionable to different people and social groups and areas of the country at different times. If you want to learn more about why and how languages change, then one of my favorite books on this topic is called Why Do Languages Change? And you can buy it through the Linguistic Discovery website, and that helps support me as a creator so I can keep producing really fun videos about language.